Well, here we are, friends and fans of Oz Farm Workshop. We are back in the barn today. On this cold first day of spring, we had a bunch of snow here in Batavia. Uh, I'm in the barn, I got the heater running. The job today is to change the pressure controller on this compressor. I got a brand new one. It looks to be exactly the same duty. Shuts off at 125, so it should be perfect. It has an on-off switch like this one. Now what's cool about these is they actually have a head pressure relief. That's why you got to buy the special air compressor one. This is already saying like 10, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40. It's saying 20 pounds already in there. It might. No, it's open to the air. But we'll be able to test this. I've got to put oil in it. Number one goal is to put oil in it. I do not want to forget that. And this has a little dipstick, dipstick. Yes, it does. So we're going to just fill that up to right there. And then uh, let me get this on a stand and we'll start putting some oil in. All right, well, I couldn't find a small reel funnel, so I made one out of cardboard. And that seems to fit. So we're just going to make a mess. All right, now we got the oil on the dipstick. I won't screw it all the way in. And we're right to the top, so I'm calling that good. There's no sight glass on this. Okay, so on the switch, you will see there's two leads in the center. These, do, these two sets of contacts are the ones that come together. So you want your feed here, your output here. Polarity does not matter on 220 because it's alternating current. So there's a hot on both legs. So I just need to take these two wires out and get them out of here. And I need to disconnect this fitting right here and unscrew this whole thing off the pipe. So let's see if we can have any success doing that. As I said, I got you up as high as this tripod will go, so I'll try to squeeze the lace together a little bit here, but it gets a little wonky. Junk switch, I guess I could probably just get rid of it. But I might throw it aside as a spare. I can't throw anything away. Okay, so those two tabs for that motor just come off just like that. Loosen up the clamp. I'm gonna put, well, I guess I gotta use the same kind of clamp over here. So I can use the same clamp again. So I'm not gonna take that off. I'm gonna take Lock that off. And what that does is hold your wire from vibrating around and abrading the wire and causing a short. Protects the wire from vibration. We're going to put the lock nut right back on. Slunk that wire back down a little bit. Yeah. 
You don't want it to vibrate, but you don't want to crush it either. All right. Nice. Now, uh, I don't want to damage this. I found these players that have like a square notch for a... So... I just need to hold the top of this because I need to protect the bottom now. This is the compression fitting. So once you get it loose, it's loose, see? It's just feedback from the head. It shuts the, it lets the pressure off the head when the uh, pump shuts off. I'm gonna try some heat. that fits. That's too big. That's pretty close. It's burning up the gauge, but I don't care. It's a crappy gauge. See, heat does the magic trick, boys. Don't be afraid to use a little heat. Now it's stuck. Rapido, mas rapido. There we go. All right. See that? Pipe dope also gets sticky. Nice and square. Um, this is the new pump switch. It should be set to 125 pounds, which is unfortunately not right. I gotta shoot. I gotta put a nipple on this. Nipple. Well, bit in the butt again. Um, you notice that's a female socket. Old pump, the old pressure switch had a male thread on it. My new switch has a female thread, so I've got to go get a short nipple, short as I can, to go between there. So I'm going to take the old switch with me uh, to make sure I get the right size nipple for that. So we're kind of on hold for that right now. All of right, course. gang, I'm back from Home Depot. And. There we go. 
I got a new one from Home Desperate. Now we're just gonna screw it in. This will be all nice. I can't reach that with anything. Now all it has to do is wire it. Auto off. So, let's see, what do we got to do? We've got to put these back in. bought myself a new hose reel too. Now I don't have all the fittings on these pipes yet, so I might not be able to run any tools today. But we can make it run and make it produce its normal pressure. Well, this screwdriver is screwed, literally. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is reel this over to where the uh, it's going to sit. So I'll pause you until we get over there. All right, well again, you're too low to see exactly what I'm doing. But I will tell you what I'm doing. I have to connect the black and the white together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to... Um, install a connector yet. Alright, sorry. I am going to insulate this differently. Because I don't like 
those red things anyway. I don't think they do shit. Do anything. So I'm just trying to protect this from the inside of that cable, see? There we go. Now there's one of these stupid things that has to go on there. There we go. It's all hooked on. So that's just going to shove in. But I might want to disconnect this to get it off this cart when I get a helping hand. Such a klutz. I'm knocking everything over here. But I'm just going to temporarily tie this, and I will tie in the ground so it's safe. It's just not going to be uh, through the connector yet. She'll be grounded. And she'll be connected through these terminals. I'm not going to hook them up permanently to the terminal shed either. I'm just going to shove them under. That's fine. I'll wrap them next time. Okay, so that's off. Got the valve open. I'm gonna turn the breaker on. Too bad. Five horsepower, so it's doing what it's doing.
Read at 125, basically, 126. So how cool is that? It did what it's supposed to do. Now I got air, Bill, boys and girls, I got air. I don't know if I'm, I got some other stuff I got to get out for this, hold on. That's perfect. All right, well, I gotta figure out something else to do here while I'm messing around. I gotta build a bench. And I wanna have a parts washer in here. And I'm gonna build shelves. Okay, what's up, guys? Uh, I don't have the materials to finish up my uh, uh, air compressor right now, but I do have some 12 and 10 inch wide planks, which are really 11 and nine and a quarter, 11 and a quarter and nine and a quarter. So I'm gonna make a bench. Now I found these legs that have been up in my attic for a long time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the nicest one of these 10 inch ones. That one's split, but I'm just gonna put it together with some screws. I'm gonna lay these guys out. Time together with a 2x4, I'm going to put the 10 in the middle. I'm going to put a 2x4 across the ends and uh, in the middle. And I've got a couple of short ones here to do that with, with nice long screws, of course. And then I'm going to set it right up on top of that and put it together with some carriage bolts. I'll put some carriage bolts right down through the top. Five of them, so maybe 10. 10 of them. And we'll go one, two, three, four, five, eight, ten of them, five sixteenths, two inches long, black nuts, all that stuff. Shortest one. So let's start with that. And this one had to be perfect. This is going to be a meter bench, you know. I'm going to weld on that stuff. I've got some steel I can put on top of it. See how the end of this looks. Good enough for me. Gotta cut a little off on this end.
I think I'm just going to go for it. And are we go away? Let's hit the crazy driver. So we're just going to pull this guy together with a couple of screws. Don't put your fingers down in there folks. Duh. Owie. Like an idiot, pinch myself. Not getting too close to the end here. There seems to be a bowl for one of these here. Mo, mo bowl. Or with that center one anyway. Let's try to keep it. Yeah, 
Let's try this one reversed. Watch my heater. Don't want the bang. This will all get pulled together when I put a 2 by 4 on the ends. Let's see how long this guy is. Oh, look at that. Did I cut that to fit? something guys like a quarter inch magic but it does right now to me I should have clamped it Alright, I 
I'm just going to cut these about a half inch short. So I said, it's just a workman. Sword. There's my sword. I got some cool lights to hang up in here, too, dudes. Once I get this together, I'll uh, Maybe I'll just lightly put a couple of screws down through this and then we'll flip it over. Well, just do me ten.
screw it off. That's not a good screw up. <laughs> uh -huh. I may want to have another cross razor too in the future, but I don't think so with this being bolted down to the bench. I didn't buy any carriage bolts yet, but I know that's how I got to put it together. So what's going on today? Well, I bought these cheap, really cheap little LED strip lights that you can hang on screws. 
and I'm going to run them all the way along the bottom of that soffit. So you just screw two screws in. And I'm just going to put them down through there and I can move them around I think in the future if I, I need to. And they daisy chain like up to six of them together. All right guys and gals and friends and fans of Bob's Barn Workshop. Hey look, I got my four uh, soffit lights up here to go over the work that'll light my workbenches so I won't have to stand in my own shadow when I work with my hands. Plus fluorescent light because the tubes are long. Well actually they're LED tube lights. Because the tubes are long, the light comes from many sources, so you don't create harsh shadows. Um, what else have I done? I uh, got this temporarily hooked up. I might change this in the future. This stub was already in here. I found this regulator. Uh, seems to work. Sears regulator. I found this dryer, dryer filter, so I put the dryer filter there. Came up with a couple of scrap nipples. Uh, Quick disconnect, now that's the big quick disconnect, that's the industrial size, so I'll get more airflow. And uh, then I got my hose reel bolted to the wall with a couple of lags. You know, you can see them in the back there. There were lags that had like heads on them, so a couple of two inch lags. That's not that heavy. I don't have to worry about somebody yanking it off the wall. That's like washer heads. One thing I think I need to do and I may do that today. Is you see how I've got that metal cable coming out of the box and wrapping around behind and coming up to the new pressure switch? I don't know if that'll meet code or not. I need to get my final inspection. So I think what I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to go over and spend a few more bucks. And I'm going to get a raised lid for that that has the uh, three pin twist lock 20 amp connector get a piece of 12 three like I use for the lift the car lift and a couple of compression fittings actually I only need one compression fitting and then uh, tie that into the pressure switch and I can get that done now I need to get a friend to help me get this off from that's on a dolly right now so I could move it around while I was under construction and uh, I don't think I need it and this would be perfect for my use I hear a little hissing But, uh, yeah, as soon as I turn the air on, that comes right up to 90. So we're going to leave it at 90 for working with the air tools. That's the right so-and-so, I believe. And uh, that'll work. This is going to work so good. See, I'm going to leave a long hose so I can reach through this window. And if you look really, you can't really see it. Over there, you'll see... the glove hole somewhere for my uh, homemade blasting cabinet so um, yeah that'll help the blasting cabinet work if you have a nice continuous flow I want to leave it over there for now because that's where the dust collector is. And so I have the dust collector going to suck out any of the fine dust that, so it doesn't get into the rest of the shop. So that's what the point of that is. All right. Got the furnace running now. I found out that um, when it's windy, it blows the flame out. So I ordered another different kind of chimney cap for it. And I got a couple of pipes that I can make a 90 out of. So I can turn the pipe up and put a regular mushroom cap on it and see if that helps stop the wind from blowing. Because this thing that's out there now is just like a funnel that points straight into the wind. And of course, it's facing west. And that's where we get all the wind. So today, my daughter's coming over in about an hour or so. And we're going to change the oil in her Honda HRV and do uh, air filter. 
and oil filter, of course. And we're also going to do her uh, differential oil change. That's recommended according to her manual, so we're going to do that. And it's been cold, so the ground should be frozen. And uh, so we're all good. All right, guys. Oh, the fan just shut off. It's 60 degrees in here. That's what I set it for. 60 is fine. I do have a lot of cold air leaks. That's what I should do today while I'm waiting is where I sealed up all these gaps. They're not super sealed. I got to get up there and, and uh, caulk those really well. And then I'm going to put insulation in from the backside. Yeah, just a couple more jobs getting done. I uh, felt all kinds of air blowing in around these windows. So I got out some expanding foam. Uh, this is too narrow for the jet to get in, so I've got to just caulk those, but I'm waiting for this foam to expand. Uh, up there by where the rafters, uh, the old shingles came through, he had cut back the shingles down to the bare decking, so I was able to shove the neck back in there and really seal those good on both ends. Um, I guess maybe I said this earlier, but I'm going to have to get up in here with regular caulking and uh, caulk around the edges of those just to help keep cold air out. You know, I have to pay for it. But man, there was a lot of wind coming in around these windows and since I put that foam in there, it's just gone. So that's a good thing. I had some dripping off in the furnace pipe and I'm wondering if my caulking on the outside melted or something. So I think I'm going to have to go out there and try to get some high temperature caulking on that. But other than that, guys, uh, my daughter was in here. You can see the tire tracks. We, uh, we changed her diff fluid in the back. We changed her oil and filter. Um, rotated her tires. And put in a new uh, air filter for her. So we did some maintenance on her car. It's an HRV. Nice little car. So we got to use the lift for what it was designed to do. Solid as an absolute rock. Perfect. This thing is perfect. I'm telling you, I love it. The oil is, of course, in the collection tank over here. That thing worked. It's flimsy and cheesy, but it works for what I needed to do. If I keep doing more of this and I get really so I need it, I'll buy a better one. But right now, it collects the oil, and that's all I really need to do. All right. I guess I babbled enough. I'm going in the house. Peace.